Okay, I can't do this. So now can I solve? Uh, I think we have something in common. <laughs> Let's do what we can do. <laughs> well, I wonder how our young innovators are solving real-world issues when we can't even handle a Rubik's cube. And that's exactly what we're here to find out. Given that they're so young and they've come up with such incredible solutions, a Rubik's cube, no big deal. Well, I totally agree. So, hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Solve for Tomorrow, a national education and innovation competition. I'm Shilpa Ratnam, and I'm Kunal Kapoor, and we've already met such unique minds with such unique solutions for solving critical world issues. And my my mind's just completely blown, and I wonder what we have in this episode because honestly, with every episode. The standard just gets higher. Absolutely, and some credit also goes to the plethora of great opportunities that they've got during their Solve for Tomorrow journey. Our solvers attended a three-day boot camp at IIT Delhi on design thinking and prototyping with weekly mentoring sessions by Samsung and IIT experts, and are being taught some really cool things to help them scale their innovations. But you know what, Shilpa? They also won Samsung vouchers worth a lakh to study online courses. Which is super cool, and I honestly wish I was part of this competition. But since that can't happen, let's meet people that have actually done it and done it right. This group of friends are using a very unusual new material to develop an all-natural, safe, and fully biodegradable alternative to sanitary pads. Here's their story. A sanitary pad. Better, you deserve natural. How amazing was that? Let's welcome Team Udan to solve for tomorrow. We have Prisha, Banalika, and Anupriya representing Team Udan. Hello, hello. Hi, Prisha. Hi, hi, Prisha. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. So, welcome, and uh, so nice to have you here. Let's start off with you guys. Uh, where are you guys from? I'm from Delhi. I've been brought up and I've been living in Delhi for most of my life. I'm also from Delhi. I've been born and brought up in Delhi. I was in Delhi till 10th grade, and then I shifted to Port Blair, Andaman and Nicobar Islands. You know, you're in Port Blair, and then Delhi. How does that work? How does the long distance sort of relationship work? We actually became best friends in 9th grade, so it was all COVID lockdown. And we're pretty used to that online medium of friendship because, like, we chatted a lot. So we became close during that time because we have a lot of like similar interests, like shows, books, movies. You yeah. guys mentioned movies, and I know you're a big fan of Kunal's. <laughs> Kunal, did you know that? No, I didn't. All three of them, yeah. These guys should win. <laughs> We have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm a big fan of yours, guys. You've solved such a critical problem in a country like ours, which is accessible to cheap sanitary products. You know, because so many women cannot afford it. But how did you envision this? 
product and how did this idea come about? So me and my nani, we share this inside joke and she lives in the rural part of Bengal and you know there's not, uh, it, it's not very accessible area firstly and of course the pads are really expensive and uh, she told me that oh she's hitting her menopause in a couple years and she told me you know now that I'm in the end of this whole cycle let's, let, you, you're a city girl you have to do something for the people of uh, you know her village and so I think that is where the idea kind of started taking root and then I kind of looked into the sugarcane industry and how it's, you know, the big gas, it's not getting properly utilized, which is again a big problem in that industry. So those kind of both problems came together into this product that kind of solves not only the problem of uh, raw material, which we can get at such a low cost, but also solves the problem of retailing at such a low cost that even rural women can afford our product. Right, and that was the idea, but what was the journey to the prototype because that must have been a whole different journey right me and Manalika, we live in delhi so we went to this local fruit juice vendor we collected the shokin we went to our home and then we boiled them in a saucepan with our mother screaming in the background and then <laughs> we boiled it and we kind of just tried to experiment that if it can absorb you know any sort of liquid once we had that bit of a thing we went to the atl lab of our school where we produced a prototype just so we can test the feasibility so then, to get our product some validity, we contacted a gynecologist. All three of us, I think, we yeah, went we on a call us. with her. So we did get some positive feedback through that. What I particularly love about this product is, you know, how open you are about it, how openly you speak about it, about period blood, we are about testing the consistency. What do you think about the stigma around the pads? Does it still exist for Generation Z? And are you guys, uh, you know, beyond that stigma now, you feel? Uh, I think one goal that we're trying to accomplish aside from getting sanitary napkins accessible to the women of the country is that we're trying to, you know, l remove the stigma that surrounds it because until and unless it is removed, no one is going to buy our pads. They're still going to use a, a cloth or, you know, some sort of plastic that's going to affect their health in the coming years. And it is even fatal, like according to what we've researched about. We're also planning to release a, yeah. uh, release pads in which are black in colour. So to like remove the stigma around period blood. Oh, that's that's very unique. That's yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, and this these are rewashable as well, yeah. right? Yeah, and true. reusable. So yeah. I think the color black is going to come in yeah. quite handy there as yeah. well. Is there any company in the world that does? I don't think so because they're all white in color, yeah, white and exactly. blue. So you guys have that color distinction as yeah. well that sets you apart. And now we know that all the 10 top teams visited the Samsung offices and R&D centers. This team visited the center in Delhi NCR. Let's see how much fun you had. My name is Anupriya Nayak. I'm from Team Udaan and I'm from Delhi. My name is Vanalika and I'm from Team Udaan. I'm Trisha Dubey from Team Udaan. Today we are visiting the Samsung facility at Delhi NCR. My experience at the facility was I think one of a kind because we got to learn all about the corporate world and how it works, what, what the environment is and the people that we interacted with, they were so nice and so genuine. I feel like we had one of the best experiences ever. So that is the thing about this entire project and this entire event that we get to interact with a lot of people in the actual industries. This is my first time coming to a corporate firm, seeing an actual work environment, something which I'll be participating in when I grow up. So it was really insightful and extremely exciting for an 11th grader. We interacted with the mentors today and it was very informative. We were able to talk about a product, they asked us questions and we were also able to ask them questions regarding our project. So that was able to provide a lot of guidance to us. The mentor session was really helpful for us and our team because we have been lacking that mentorship for most of the time that we've been working on this project. And we're really glad that through Samsung, we had access to such genuine mentors who were so invested in our ideas and who gave really valuable feedback that we've been you know, incorporating in our project bit by bit as we go. This CSR activity that, that Samsung has done, Solve for Tomorrow, 
I think that has really changed my view on Samsung. It has made me believe that even MNC, such huge corporate firms, do care about the youth, do care about improving the world. So it has really improved my respect for Samsung and I would love to get involved with Samsung in the future as well. We are very thankful for the experience that we gained because we were passionate about our idea but we did not have much of an experience in the actual field. I think that we need to present our project in the way that it deserves to get presented and I'm sure that me and my wonderful team, I'm really proud of them, we're going to do a great job and uh, we're really excited to be a part of this. The USP is their idea, the novelty of using sugarcane waste as the main absorbent material of sanitary pad. This pet thought is very novel and which is going to take this team higher up. At Samsung, innovation is our DNA. And like these guys, we believe in making product, we can empower people to do more and be more. All of you look so happy and excited visiting the center and I can imagine why, what was the most special part of it? The billiards room in the recreation center. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know how to play billiards. None so of us did. None we were all like did. just playing together. So there was this sir over there, so he taught us billiards and that was amazing. That was the best part for me at least. So how are the, how are the mentors, how are all your mentors helping you develop this product? Because till now, we haven't received much guidance. We had to do all of this on our own. Right. So it was good having so many people from so many different fields who were actually invested into helping us. Yeah, it's always great to have good mentors, no? Right. Yes. Also, the, like, the mentors that we got at Samsung, I think they provided this nuanced idea for our project and they helped us view it from different lenses so that we can make, you know, expand our project to something that everyone can understand. Well, we're all very inspired by your product and I hope that the next time I go to a shop and shop for sanitary products, I find yours on the top shelf. I know I'm going to be buying it. <laughs> we wish you all the best for the finale team, Udan. Keep flying and keep soaring high. So we're going to head into a very short break now, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have a very interesting innovation for everyone who would like to keep their heart health in check. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Solve for Tomorrow. We are talking to some bright young minds of the country. We just met Team Udan with a sustainable idea of biodegradable sanitary pads. The next innovation is in the space of healthcare. Let's take a look at what we have in store. My hobbies range from playing lawn tennis to doing 3D modeling. The inspiration for this idea came to me when I was in 8th class. I was reading a report which depicted the deaths which are caused by cardiac arrests in an ear. I decided to create a device which could provide necessary attention to the sufferers of heart attacks and other cardiac related diseases within the necessary time frame. The project which I am working on is basically a vest which can detect a person's ECG on the go and is available at a cheap cost. When I came up with this idea, the first person with whom I shared this idea was my father because he is a doctor. So I wanted to verify the idea from him to see if it was viable or not. This device can alert the ambulance and can also alert the person's relatives if the person suffers from a heart attack or any problem related to the person's heart's electrical activity. What he's doing at this stage, that is really a great achievement, but this is not the ending. This is just the beginning. Especially be warned by those who previously have a history of cardiac illnesses as this idea came to his mind and that really shows that Rushil cares about humanity. Since it can detect the heart attack 10 to 15 minutes in advance or even a day in advance due to the fluctuation in the person's regular heart electrical activity, I hope that this device will help reduce a large amount of unnoticed cardiac deaths in the future. Please welcome Rushil Saraswat from Rajasthan with CAD, the Cardiac Arrhythmia Detector. So 
So, Rushil, the CAD seems like a really interesting device. So, so, what was the starting point for this and you know, why do you identify the need for a device like this? So, the starting point was when I was in 8th grade, I read a report which depicted the number of deaths caused by indetectable cardiac related incidents. So, basically, a person just falls on the ground and the people who are near him, they do not realize that what has happened. It may be due to lack of energy or it may be due to some heart related problem. Sure. So, basically, two to three days before, their body has some electrical disturbance in their heart's activity. So, by this, this device can detect if the person is going to suffer from an arrhythmia or heart attack or not. That's, that's really interesting and especially, you know, we live in a time where so many young people are getting heart attacks. I mean, I know friends that are now afraid to go to the gym because they're like, you know, somebody that I know, I know that was in their 30s and 40s has suffered a heart attack and you don't know why, right? And that you met some amazing mentors. Let's have to look at what they have to say. I am Rushil Saraswat from Team CAD. I am from Cambridge Court World School, Rajasthan. My experience in the Solve for Tomorrow has been wonderful. It has given me exposure to meet many new people and learn a lot of new things. And I hope that these things will help me improve my project even further into the future and make it uh, even a better product. My experience interacting with mentors was also very nice. The mentors helped me a lot. They helped me by giving me a lot of new tips on how to build a project, how do I market it properly. It was a field in which I was lacking. And now I think that this lack of mind has been covered up. I learned a lot of marketing jargons which I believe and they also believe the judges could ask me how to market the product. So basically those jargons helped me during the presentation. My experience at the R&D facilities was wonderful because I learned how development and how emergence of new ideas occurs in the Samsung offices and it was also my introduction to corporate life of Samsung which I find very intriguing. What makes us different is our young fashionate team that come from all works of life. Uh, they design product and user experience that are locally inspired and global desire and can meaningfully change our life. Before visiting the facility, I thought that Samsung, just like any normal, any other normal person would, simply sat and thought their ideas, but now I have come to realize that the great ideas which are thought of here, they are come from uh, people who have invested a lot of time in thinking them and designing them. This one guy, Rachel, who came up on the stage and the way he presented the idea was just mind-blowing. And the problem he's trying to solve itself is such a big problem in our society right now. And we find so many people are suffering from the same disease and not getting the treatment on time. So the device could help many people to save their lives. I have advised Rushil to be more confident and just believe in his idea. His idea is really good. All he has to do is just give his heart to the idea and take it forward. Rushil, the mentors clearly believe in the potential of CAD. What do you feel about your product? I feel that this product has the potential to revolutionize healthcare and wearable industry and it will help save a lot of lives. Uh, Rushil, what were the challenges that you faced while developing this product? It was difficult but I was up to the challenge. So there were a lot of challenges. The major challenge which I faced was my skill set because when I started working on this, I lacked a lot of skills which were required to complete this. When I had to create the app, I did not know how to do it and the app wouldn't work even after 10 to 15 tries. So I almost gave up, but then 
my inspiration broke again and I continued working on this and it is on this stage. Rushil, thank you so much. It was wonderful having you here and I hope uh, lots of students are inspired by this wonderful idea and all the work that you put into it. Well, now it's time to end another episode and put a pause to our journey. It has been so exciting to speak to the Gen Z of our country and I can't help but think that our future is in safe hands. That's right, Shilpa. We're inching closer to the finale where our top 10 will now compete for the top three spots. We have more to come on Solve for Tomorrow, a unique CSR initiative by Samsung. Until next time, goodbye. Alpha Pulse is the innovative technology to treat the partially hearing loss patients to break the stigma in their life. World first non-surgical hearing device. No more parents need to drill their children's skull for hearing. Our smart patches eliminates the need of a conscious decision wherein we will notify not only you but even your loved ones whenever your blood glucose levels are out of your safe ranges.